Welcome to ThinkTech Hawaii Visit Spotlight. This is Alice Lee Hagen. Today we're going to talk about the Scheidler College of Business at the University of Hawaii. The college is marking its 65, uh, 65 year anniversary this year, and over the, over the past years, we have been training business leaders in Hawaii for the, um, in the U.S. mainland and also business leaders in the Asia-Pacific region. Today, my guest is Dr. Vance Rowley, the Dean of Scheidler College of Business. He has been our Dean since January 2005, and prior to that, he was the, uh, he was the, uh, he was the Dean at the University of Hawaii, and he received his bachelor's degree from Ber uh, University of California at Berkeley, and he also um, graduated with the MA and PhD degrees in economics from Harvard University. Dean Rowley, welcome, and it's an honor to have you here at Thank my you, webcast. Alice. Now, of course, um, the, major, the major story in the past few weeks has to do with Jade Scheidler's visionary gift. Um, before I roll the video of his interview, maybe you can tell us about his first gift to us, um, I guess, shortly after you joined the college. Well, yeah, I joined the college January 1st, 2005, and I actually, before that, I was at the University of Washington for 21 years. Um, so the gift, the first gift came in the fall of 2006, and it was for $25 million. And it was in his honor we named the college uh, Scheidler College of Business. After the first $25 million gift, he actually gave another $6 million between that gift and the huge gift uh, we announced a couple of weeks ago. The first gift had a huge uh, impact. Um, we established quite a few uh, faculty endowments, so we need fellowships, professorships, and chairs in order to recruit out really outstanding faculty. Uh, it gave a lot of scholarship support, primarily to our new full-time MBA program, so we were able to launch that program as a result of that first uh, gift. Uh, That's it, a great overview. Maybe yeah. I can ask the producer to roll the video, okay. and then you can tell us a little bit more about the, uh, the visionary gift. Producer, could you roll the video, please? I believe this is the largest gift to the University of Hawaii in its history. The business school is going to train the future business leaders of Hawaii and many business leaders beyond Hawaii. Over the last really four or five years, I've started to look at one, the, 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 the subjective change, but also the objective measurements that many universities are uh, judged by. And so I was, I was actually, it exceeded my expectations. He's applying his immense business acumen to our university, to our business school, allowing us to become a global leading business school among the best. When you have someone with the high standards of a Jay Scheidler um, sharing with us and with the community that we really are capable of stepping up and achieving true excellence when we have the financial support to do so, that's a very powerful message for the university and the community. We have a real sense of community here at the Scheider College of Business. Our students can compete anywhere in the global marketplace. Our faculty is absolutely world class. Great students lead to great alumni. Everybody's going to have a great sense of pride that somebody is willing to invest this much in their college.
Dean Rowley, I mentioned in my introduction that you've been with the college for almost 10 years. So this must be a major accomplishment for you. And first of all, congratulations. And Thank you. the second thing is I'm proud to be part of the college as well. Now, uh, before we play that interview with Mr. Scheidler, you mentioned about how the, uh, how, how the major gifts have benefited the college. Would you like to go deeper into that? Um, about the faculty, when you came, we only had about, what, five or six endowed faculty? We had uh, six endowed chairs mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. um, as a result of uh, Jay Scheidler's first gift, we have been able to grow the number of faculty endowments from six to 31. And this fact, this, uh, this large gift, the visionary gift, is going to immediately add another five. So we'll be up from six to 36 uh, faculty endowments. You need to have a really strong faculty in order to have a great business school. And this has allowed us to uh, recruit from the best uh, faculty talent pool uh, that anybody else is recruiting from. So it's making us very competitive in the market for uh, faculty. I'll just give you one example. So, um, and we're strong across the board now with our faculty. Uh, and as you hire really good faculty, the more really good faculty want to come here. And it wasn't just Jay Scheider's gift. So the first gift and hopefully the second gift will lead to a bandwagon effect. So we had lots of others come and also uh, give faculty support and scholarship support. But the one example is I point to usually is our uh, Department of Marketing. Uh, there have been several studies recently that have ranked our faculty in Department of Marketing extremely highly. Mm -hmm. One, I ranked them number one in the world in the international marketing area. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. it's just incredible what they've been able to, to do with increased support. Now, um, you mentioned about um, these, uh, uh, this monetary gift that it could draw world-class faculty and it, it, this will bring in more faculty. So in terms of the programs, um, how, how uh, is it going to impact the programs that we have currently offering then? Well, let me go back to the first gift. Okay. Before the first gift, we did not have a full-time MBA program. Mm -hmm. So the first gift allowed us to establish a full-time MBA along with substantial scholarship support. So these days, in order to compete, it's a competitive world. Business schools like to compete. We train business people to compete, and we're competing for students and faculty. So in order to compete for the best students and keep the best students here in Hawaii, we need scholarship support. So that really helped uh, bolster that program. Also allowed us to um, establish what is now a distance learning EMBA program, for mostly for the neighbor islands. Uh, allowed us to uh, expand our programs greatly in Vietnam. We have the, not only the best MBA program here in Hawaii, but the best MBA program in uh, Vietnam, uh, and also a freshman admit program. So all these things resulted from the first gift. I don't foresee us expanding the portfolio of programs that much, but I see us uh, making sure that the quality improves over time. So this next gift, I think, is just going to allow us to invest in these programs to make sure that the highest quality are possible. Um, there are many directions that I can take this comment. And uh, let me start with, uh, for example, the distance learning executive MBA program first. And I know that since I came here about eight years ago, it's, it has always been a mission to serve the neighbor islands um, residents. Can you elaborate on that? Well, this program, uh, we've tried several times. We, we think we finally found the model. So the first model was what we called the Neighbor Island MBA. And we broadcast classes from our part-time program. And Neighbor Island students had to go to remote sites. And you know, students on the big island had to drive to Waimea, to Kona. And this is actually quite a drive. A couple nights a week. The program was taking three plus years to finish. The neighbor island students, since they, they didn't have a lot, lot of options, I mean, they stuck in there. We also, to really help this program, we had some uh, scholarship support from uh, Hawaii Tug and Barge, Young Brothers, uh, basically the salt chuck companies, um, including Maui Petroleum and Aloha Air Cargo. And they've been stalwart supporters of this program all the way uh, through. So that, um, that program evolved into the distance learning EMBA. So we thought there's got to be a better way to do, to do this. And so I think we did find a way. And I'm really happy the way 
we do things now at the college. So if somebody has an idea, it happens to be me, and say, well, let's think of a better way to do this. The faculty now are so engaged, they're so into change, they're so into improvement, I basically just said, here's the problem. Let's, let's go to find something better than what we have. And they came up with something incredibly good. Um, well, I guess we're kind of jumping forward. You're saying that um, faculty, staff, we're really engaged, and if we have ideas, we try to make it happen. But, um, you know, earlier on, uh, we've always been talking about the major gift from, from Mr. Shiva, but of course you do play a critical role too. And, and you've been here for 10 years, and um, there's significant transformation um, at the college. And, and you do play an important role. And I guess it, at the interview, um, I think Mr. Shiva said something about exceeding expectations, and I presume he's talking about you. So my question is, tell us about your leadership style, and um, how do you foster this engagement from the faculty, from the staff? And uh, you mentioned the sense of community at the college as well. Well, leadership style, I think, evolves depending on the situation you're in. So I think my leadership style has changed a lot over the last 10 years. Um, we're at a very good place right now. So my goal is always to uh, have my job to evolve so it's a really easy job. That, that, that's my goal. Uh, that's very humble. <laughs> humble for you to say that. I'm sure it's not an easy job. Well, um, so, you know, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. I was, a, you know, another guy from the mainland coming to the University of Hawaii. Nobody is really sure how long I was going to stay, most likely, because I know that's how I view people now that we hire from the, <laughs> I mean, how long are they going to stay? They're uh -huh. committed to be here. Why are they here? And I'm sure, I know, I mean, those were some of the, the questions uh, uh, being asked. And I think at the beginning, it was just to try to get a culture of change, of improving, and just get people used to change. Mm -hmm. And I think, so the first five years, I kind of felt like maybe I was, I was pulling, you know, people that let's change, let's get better. I think the last five years, again, I think people really have bought into this. They've seen the difference. They've seen the increase in resources. So now faculty, not only do they have faculty endowments, they have research support. There's opportunities for extra teaching for our exceptional teachers in the classroom. Uh, I think they've kind of bought into this idea of let's get better. And I think that makes it, it's easier. It's much easier to lead now than it was a decade ago. Oh, yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, we're up on our first break, so we will continue our conversation um, to talk about the gifts and an update of the college then. My guest is Dean Rowley. The, uh, my guest is Dean Rowley from Shiloh College of Business. We've been talking about the major gifts from Mr. Jay Shiloh. We'll be taking a short break. Please stay with us. Hi, my name is Sachiko Slomas. I'm the floor manager of the ThinkTech Hawaii here. Uh, you can join us on the air every weekday from 1 to 5 or off the air at thinktechhawaii.com. We stream all of our videos and all of our amazing, like, amazing shows <laughs> at thinktechhawaii.com or on our Ustream channel. You can also check us out on Twitter at thinktechhi or Instagram at thinktechhi also. I'll be listening and I hope to see you there. Thanks. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. This is Alice Lee Hagen, and you're watching Business Education Spotlight. My conversation is with Dean Rowley from the Shiloh College of Business. Dean Rowley, you've been talking about um, managing and changing the culture at the college. Um, let me see. Um, tell us uh, how, well, let's talk about another international program because I guess one of our strengths is our focus in Asia Pacific. So tell us about the Vietnam program then. Well, we have a portfolio of, mm -hmm. of, of Asia-focused programs. and. Basically, everything we do is, is Asia-focused, but mm -hmm. we're very proud of the Vietnam Executive MBA program. Mm -hmm. So when I came here, uh, the faculty director was uh, Professor Dana Alden, who did a really great job of getting the program established in Hanoi. And if I can interrupt, 
there. Um, he is also currently our faculty director for the Healthcare Track uh, Executive MBA program. That's right. You're never off the hook with me if you do a good job. <laughs> And then um, uh, right now we have just an exceptional uh, professor, Professor Tung Bui, mm -hmm. uh, Vietnamese uh, American, who's just doing a tremendous job as well. And it, uh, with his efforts, we've been able to expand in Ho Chi Minh City from Hanoi. So we were going for one section every other year in Hanoi of about 20 to 30 students. Now we have overlapping cohorts of sections in Hanoi and overlapping cohorts in Ho Chi Minh City. So at any moment in time, we probably have about 120 executive MBA students in uh, Vietnam. These are exceptional. We're the only AACSB accredited uh, program in Vietnam. We're the most expensive program in Vietnam. We're the best program in Vietnam. And I guess that's help, that helps with the branding too, right, since we are the most expensive program there. It does mm -hmm. uh, help. It's odd, you know. So you're supposed to, there's supposed to be demand curves, you know. So the higher the price, the lower demand, but it does sometimes signal a good brand. Okay. So there's other programs there that are not as expensive, uh -huh. but they don't have the faculty costs that we have. So our faculty, they go to Vietnam to teach in this program. I remember you mentioned about the GDP. Um, you were saying that the alumni, can you elaborate on that one? Well, this was mm -hmm. five years ago uh -huh. at least. So the Financial Times had an article on uh, Vietnam and they had a paragraph or so mm -hmm. in this article, and it said that 25% uh, of the GDP in Vietnam was from our alumni, from the Schneider College Executive MBA program. Wow. So we were getting the CEOs, the presidents of the major organizations in Vietnam uh, to be students in this program. Well, even just looking at this particular program, it has evolved a lot since you came. And if I can go back to having you reflect on your experience here for the past 10 years. I know me you mentioned earlier on that for the first five years, it was trying to push things to happen, but now you, things are falling into places. So um, I guess maybe, do you, do you still remember the first day when you joined the college? Uh, well, it was January 2005, and I'd just come from Seattle, and I remember being, how pleasant it was to have the sunshine and the nice warm uh, temperature. Here. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that was it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the climate was overwhelming. It took me a while to, to kind of focus in on what season it was, because in, in Seattle, it's pretty easy to figure out if it's winter or spring or summer. Here, I, I, would, I had to calibrate my senses all over again. To, couldn't figure out what season it was until I thought, well, what month is this? Oh, okay. Um, now, you've been with the University of, well, you have been with the University of Washington since the mid-80s. So how had that position there helped you with this current position here as the dean? I think it was uh, essential experience where I wanted to go with uh, the Scheider College of Business. Mm -hmm. um, we, uh, we are a very good business school at UW. Um, we had uh, gone through a series of deans, mm -hmm. and I've seen saw some good performance, some bad performance, and I was fortunate to work for a dean uh, my last five years who I thought had it right. And so he was a good mentor to me. His name is Yash Gupta. And he went to be dean of the Marshall School at USC, and so I took over as acting dean for him when uh, he left. But he was all about uh, alumni engagement, uh, just quality of the programs, ample support for faculty, and to just get better. Mm -hmm. And when I, my year as acting dean, we were uh, ranked 20th in the, in the top 20 in the U.S. in terms of full-time MBA programs. So I thought I had a good model, and I thought that's where we want to be at University of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Now, then I guess the next question is, after you come here, what do you think is uniquely challenging to being a dean at a business school here in Hawaii? Uniquely challenging? Mm -hmm. uh, I really, I don't know if there's anything uniquely mm -hmm. challenged. I try to think of challenges as advantages. So some people might say, well, our location's a challenge mm -hmm. right in the middle Pacific Ocean. I said, well, that's actually an advantage, right? But right between the West Coast of the U.S. and Asia, mm -hmm. that's an advantage. So I don't try to think of challenges so much as how you can turn a challenge around to an advantage for you. That's, that's a wonderful thing to say. Um, 
Let's go back to alumni engagement. And I know you mentioned that earlier on, even at uh, Washington. That's, I guess that's part of your responsibility as a dean to go out and keep the alumni and the business community engaged. How much time do you spend doing that? I spend a significant portion of my time. I don't know. I've never really sat down to think how what percentage, but mm -hmm. a significant portion of my time. I don't view it as really as a job. Uh, getting our alumni engaged is crucial to the success of college. I take great joy if I see one of our alumni uh, having pride in the college. I feel like, gee, we must be doing something right. So going out and getting the alumni engaged, it's in getting them engaged. It's not just going, say, hi, but it's getting them involved with our students, getting them involved with our programs, helping us recruit, providing scholarship support, faculty endowment support. There are a number of ways of uh, getting engaged for our entrepreneurship program, uh, and it truly is engagement. It's mm -hmm. not just you know, recognizing that they're alumni, it's getting them engaged. You talked about entrepreneurship program. Do you want to um, share with the audience uh, a few things about PACE, about the Pacific Asia Center for Entrepreneurship? Right now, uh, PACE is, uh, is our main area of, of emphasis. So. Uh, before that, we were looking at study abroad scholarships, and perhaps we can go talk about that a bit. But right now, it's our entrepreneurship uh, center. We feel uh, we're in a really good position here at the University of Hawaii to commercialize technology in our labs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, insightful uh, vice president and system, Vasilis Sirmos, uh, who's driving the innovation at the UH system. Uh, and and then we have Susan Yamada, who is our amazing uh, director of PACE, mm -hmm. who's provided educational programs for the entire University of Hawaii system during her time as uh, director. There's Accelerate UH, which is mm -hmm. a, new, uh, a new thing that Facilis and uh, Susan are heavily engaged, engaged in, along with uh, Omar Sultan, one of our alums, who I just saw walking over here, in fact, today. Oh, okay. uh, uh -huh. And it, it, it's, things are lining up now where I think we've all wanted to do this, but I think now is, has been the best time in the 10 years I've been here to really move the commercialization and entrepreneurship efforts forward at the University of Hawaii. See, and that kind of uh, summarizes our relationship with the business community and the alumni as well. Um, I was going to ask you, uh, well, of course, Jay Shiler is an alumnus of ours. He graduated in 1968. Could you tell us about your um, relationship with him? Because I, as I mentioned earlier on before we came in, um, I'm sure he was the first few persons that you met when you joined the college. My relationship with Jay is good. good. I, I really <laughs> like Jay Shiler. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he was uh, somebody I met pretty early on, that's mm -hmm. right. And again, I came here with, I saw the potential here. I thought what is now the Sh Scheider College of Business had huge potential. Asia focus, the economy was going uh, to the Asia mm -hmm. direction. And I looked at the quality of our faculty and students, I thought we had huge potential to get a lot better. So basically I shared that with Jay Scheidler, and I told him what I thought we needed uh, in terms of investments for faculty endowments and scholarships and the portfolio programs that we needed to become a really a top uh, business school. And I think he could see the vision and how we could get there. So I didn't just give him kind of goals. I said, I think here's, here is where we'd like to be. Here's where I think we, we can be, and I think this is what we need to get there. Can you think, I know you work very closely with him and you share a lot of ideas, but can you think of maybe one or two um, projects or ideas where it has come to fruition and that you're proud of? Well, I mentioned some of these already. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the, we were able to launch a full-time MBA program mm -hmm. because of Jay Scheidler's mm -hmm. uh, initial gift. Um, he actually, the first gift, uh, funded our entrepreneurship center significantly over, over the first five years as well. Okay. Funded our executive education center. In fact, you were probably hired on Jay Scheidler Fund Absolutely. for the first uh, few yeah. years. So mm -hmm. I saw areas of need and he provided that and uh, all the programs are better. Vietnam provided support there. Mm -hmm. You can go down the board, faculty support, summer research support, which is essential 
in recruiting and retaining the best faculty. That was all from the initial uh, Scheidler gift. But I also told them we needed some endowment support. It couldn't, we can't just kind of fund things over five years. We can't rec recruit people just for the promise of funding over five years. Endowments are invested in a fixed pool of funds and they spin off a certain return every year, but the principle remains either the same or if the market goes up, it increases over time. So we needed that to recruit great faculty. So it had a huge impact. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, that reminds me, can you explain to us about the second gift? Because it has to, it, it's kind of modeled after the um, Bishop Estate. Um, Right. Well, we don't have enough time to. <laughs> but yes, you it's do. a very complicated gift. Very uh -huh. complicated. Mm -hmm. It's a really. It's a, we call it a visionary gift mm -hmm. because the outcome is going to be to ensure the long run future of the Scheider College of Business. So, mm -hmm. here we have a donor mm -hmm. who's uh, we named the school after him, mm -hmm. and he looking for a way to ensure that long run uh, viability and excellence in the college. So this is kind of based after Kamehameha Schools. It's a, a land-based gift, essentially. So he's been uh, buying uh, and owns commercial real estate throughout the U.S. And these so far are all U.S. mainland buildings, separating the building from the land. And the college benefits from the lease income from the land, essentially. Some of them are mortgaged but one uh, right now is not. And so uh, the uh, college is going to benefit entirely from the lease income from that uh, land. That's one in, in Colorado. Okay. So this, is, this implies that there will be a sustained stream of um, funding over a period of time then. Yeah, so these works. leases are 99 years, and then mm -hmm. we have the ownership in one of these uh, outright. So it's a very stable, long-run source of, of income. And that's going to be the main uh, structure of this gift. So he's going to continue to add to this portfolio of buildings. I think he has about nine now. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that um, entrepreneurship programs are doing well, and of course our graduate programs, the full-time, part-time um, MBA program. Now I also know that recently you, uh, the college has started a program for, for freshmen. Can you tell us about that? Well, we're very excited about our freshman program. We call it the uh, Direct Admit Program, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, everybody calls it DAP now. But that's, it's it's Freshman Admit Program. Mm -hmm. This actually it was it's made possible because of the funding from um, not only Jay Shida but from other alums and uh, corporate sponsors to provide scholarship support. But it was actually uh, started by uh, Bob Clark, who okay. was the former CEO of uh, HEI. Mm -hmm and works with the college very closely. We're, we always benefit from his advice. It was, this, this started as just an enrichment program for selected freshmen. And so he would bring some of his uh, CEO friends in and, and uh, once every couple of weeks talk to them about business and different aspects of business leadership. And then I went to our advisory board. Actually, the advisory board said, well, why don't you just admit these students? They're all terrific. Why don't you just admit them as freshmen? I said, mm -hmm. oh, okay, we'll take it to the faculty. The faculty said, that's a great idea. And so now we have uh, a really strong freshman cohort. We have the best freshmen in the UH system, the Scheidler College of Business. They're exceptional freshmen. The program's gone from 20 to 40 to 70. Wow. And we're going to cap it at 80. So this next year, we could reach our cap. That's fantastic. We're up on our second break, so we'll continue. My guest has been Dean Rowley from the Scheidler College of Business, and we have been talking about the growth and uh, an update of what we've been doing here at the Scheidler College of Business. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Aloha, my name is Willow Chang Elion, and I host a show called The Art of Life. We air live every Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. And what we do is basically we focus on individuals who create a unique sense of place for Hawaii. These are movers and shakers, artists, innovators. They are also traditionalists. They're all involved in the archival process, and they make this place a unique place, one that makes Hawaii a richer place to be. I hope you do join us and certainly tell your friends about the show whether they live here or they live abroad. It's a way to give back to our community. We're keeping it Pono. 
if you're just joining us, my conversation has been with Dean Rowley from the Scheidler College of Business. Dean Rowley, it's really exciting to hear about this program for the freshmen. And it seems that, um, and I guess going back to what Mr. Scheidler also saying, that we are training bis future business leaders here in Hawaii. Let's um, look at the college in terms of the whole UH system. Where do we stand? Well, I think that we have uh, we have the best students in the UH uh, uh, period, uh, I, and I think one reason for that is that um, these days, I mean, higher education is expensive. The tuition at UH, even though compared to the mainland, is still a good value, it's still expensive. And I think uh, students now are very seriously looking at what they can do in college to ensure some jobs when they graduate. I know that's our parents are interested in that. Oh, absolutely. Yes, so, I hear you. Yeah, so we have, you know, we invest in uh, career placement, our own career placement staff for both our undergraduates and our MBAs, and we track the numbers. Um, I think we had something like 73% um, of our undergraduates were placed uh, three months after commencement last year, 400 plus a year get internships. And this is a, with a student body for undergraduates, about 1,000. So we try to provide lots of opportunities for our students. So I think that's making us very attractive. We were the highest growth. There. I think there's only two growth areas, maybe three growth areas on uh, Manoa uh, for this fall. And we were by far, in terms of percentage increase and numbers, the biggest growth area in Manoa. Wow. Um Growth aside, um, what are some of the challenges? And of course, uh, I'm alluding to a lot of the news that we've been hearing um, in the media about the change of leadership, the financial constraint. Uh, what's keeping you up at night? We need more state support. We desperately need more state support. Mm -hmm. um, we're a good investment, too. So. I think if we were able to get some more funds, we could get a good return on those funds for the citizens of this state. Mm -hmm. So that's what's keeping me up at night. You think, well, how can a business school that's now a $100 million business school need more funds? Well, donors don't give to replace state funding. Donors give to enhance programs. And there's no exception with the Jay Scheidler gift mm -hmm. and the, the gifts of other uh, alumni and friends. The basic state support is needed to fund uh, faculty salaries in particular, and most of our state salaries. All of our state funds go to salaries, and we need more. I'm glad you brought up that point, because sometimes I think people would look at it very differently. They would say, oh, Shiloh got a major gift, and um, I think we're set. But uh, it's great that you could point out that um, we need the state funding as well. Now, with the, um, the, uh, the recent election um, and the new governor, how do you think that um, they, what would change? Any, any insight on that? I don't, I'm not sure that is the important factor, although I think the governor is one of our alumni, so we'll have to get engage him. Uh -huh. uh, um, but I think the challenge has been the interaction with Manoa mm -hmm. in particular and the ledge. So I think that, that's where the challenge that's where the challenge is. I don't think it's necessarily the ledge's fault. In fact, I don't think it's their fault. I think it's Manoa's uh, fault. So we've got to get a lot better of describing the value we add to the state and why we deserve more funding. Now, given these challenges, um, lack of funding, um, even though we have a major gift, so what is the college doing differently compared to the rest of the university? Well, if, if I told you all that, then they may stop me. So I'm not going <laughs> to <Okay>. say that. <laughs> all right. We t well, we try to find ways uh -huh. of uh, generating our own revenue okay. and to support the college. Okay. And we've been, and you know, your your shop with Executive Education mm -hmm. uh, has been subsidizing the college pretty substantially the last few years. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, Let's change subject here then. <laughs> uh, now, you have been in business school for a long time, since the mid-80s. Right. So what has changed since you joined University of Washington as a faculty? 
Well, it was an interesting time to join business school. So in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a real push for research. And business schools have not lost that focus. The thing that has changed the most, I think, is that uh, the, the education side, the teaching side, has become much more important. When I joined business school in 1983, uh, it was all about your research record. And now, great value is placed on how you do in the classroom mm -hmm. uh, as well. So we recognize, in fact, part of that is because tuition has gone up so much. So you feel responsible, business schools feel responsible, universities should feel responsible for, to provide a quality uh, educational experience for their students. Um, do you miss teaching? I know you were a finance professor before, and I also heard that you were, uh, you were highly rated. So do you miss that? the research and the teaching? This is just a different challenge. So, um, you know, I was in the classroom for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I may go back to classroom again sometime, never know. Mm -hmm. Finance has probably changed a bit since I was last doing that. Uh, but yes, I mean, but the reason I like being engaged with a business school as a dean and not in some other administrative position is I can open my door and see students so it's not like I'm isolated from students. Uh, I, they're all, I, you know, I met with a student yesterday talking about it, you know, the financial situation of the college. I meet with the clubs. Uh, so that part I still get, the interaction with students that I got in the classroom. Is what, what is, and that's what I really enjoyed about the, the teaching part of my past job. Ah, okay. Now, um, well, I guess... I was thinking of asking you to take us through your career because you mentioned that um, being the dean is probably another enjoyable experience. Or do you? Ha when did you realize that you want to be a dean? Because earlier on, you were the assistant vice president at the Federal Reserve Bank at Kansas, um, Kansas City before you went back to the academic world, right? Right. So I've actually. So I got my PhD when I was 25. So that accounts for this long oh academic <laughs> career I've had. So uh, yeah, I was at the Federal Reserve for six years. I was on leave one year of that, and then Fed, uh, University of Washington 21 and mm -hmm. University of Hawaii 10. Mm -hmm. So what, what was the question again? Um, have Just, you always known that you want to oh, be? be yes. No, I was pretty sure I didn't want to be. Uh, so. Um, uh, so again, I had this mentor, Yash Gupta, who was dean of the University of Washington Business School. And I was um, elected uh, the president of the what we have in the University of Hawaii in the colleges as the faculty senate. So the faculty elected me to represent them. And uh, Yash asked me to be an associate dean. So they had three associate deans. And he asked me to be then the senior one, basically. And I said, no. And I said, here's a list of people who do a far better job than, than I would do. Mm -hmm. And he just persisted. So I said, OK, I'll do it. So it wasn't really great career planning on my part. But then, um, you know, I had been doing research and teaching for research 25 years, 26 years, teaching for 20. And I found the new set of challenges kind of invigorating. So once I started doing it, we did great things. We really. You know, we got the business school out of, they were out of, we were out of the top 50, we got them in the top 20 in terms of the rankings at, at University of Washington. Very gratifying. Had kind of a cranky faculty at the beginning, uh -huh. and happy faculty at the end and staff. And so it was nice seeing how that organization changed. I really enjoyed that. That's wonderful. Now, um, so what do you foresee then, uh, or envision in the next five, 10 years in terms of, um, innovation in business school, because you were talking earlier on about how when you first started, research was more, most important, but now teaching has become really critical. And I think that has to also do with the technology innovation. So what, what do you think business school will look like in five, 10 years' time? Well, that's hard to say. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are some challenges now. There's the big online courses that are being mm -hmm. offered, so that's on the radar screen. Uh, there's things like the design school at Stanford that's now in business school, radar screen, different ways of thinking about innovation. Uh, so there's always lots of challenges and you really can't, I really can't tell where we're going. Mm -hmm. We did step into the, uh, the uh, distance learning 
uh, with a distance learning executive MBA, and it's a hybrid, so it's not, I really think it's really important to get business students together in a room to kind of socialize them in the, in the business uh, process and not just do everything 100% online. Mm -hmm. But I can see more courses like that for us, or more, more, more hybrid courses where there's an online component that's very convenient, but yet once a month or so you bring the whole class together mm -hmm. uh, for a day. Now, online programs aside, um, I guess the other thing too is perhaps um, do you see more collaboration among professional schools like engineering, law school, and I know that um, for some of the business plan competitions, uh, we not only have students from our college, but uh, there are students from the other schools and colleges as well. Is that correct? That's right. We've been trying to reach out for a number of years, engineering, law, uh, Jabson, and I think with some success. I think that will continue to grow. That those, those, those things tend to grow slowly, though. But, I, you know, the deans at Manoa get along extremely well. Uh, we're, you know, working on something like an innovation center now. It would be in partnership with natural sciences, engineering, and Scheidler. Uh, so I think the opportunities are there, and I think if, the more we collaborate, the stronger we'll all be, mm -hmm. especially in this world of scarce resources. Right. Now, um, earlier on, you talked about how you still enjoy um, meeting and interacting with students. And if they were to come to you for your advice, what would you say to them? Well, what kind of advice? Career advice, Career advice. yes. Well, um, so five years ago or six years ago, I, I would ask, you know, talk to students and, and I would say be an accountant. It's a good job market, mm -hmm. uh, you know, good career path, prepares you for any type of uh, career. Lots of CEOs have been accountants, a lot, of course, managing partners of accounting firms do very well. Uh, I would still think that's good advice. Actually, we place students in all fields. Mm -hmm. So even, you might think, well, it's the marketing uh, world can't be that large in Hawaii. We place 100 or so students every year who are marketing majors in marketing jobs, believe oh. it or not. So wow. all of our major, if, if we have a major that's not doing well, the major tends to get small. The students understand it. I mean, I can. I don't want to single out any majors, but we have, you know, one now that's quite small, and it's just because there aren't a lot of jobs available for mm -hmm. those. I would say, um, regardless of the major you had, uh, I would look at our entrepreneurship program because it teaches you a different way of thinking, mm -hmm. and you can use that way of thinking even if you're not an entrepreneur, even if you're not starting your own business, you can use it for whomever you're, you're working for. Mm. Um, and going back to you, you've been here with us for 10 years, so tell us two things that you've learned over this um, decade. Two things I've learned. Mm -hmm. I'm very bad at pronouncing names. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, but that can be a conversation, <laughs> right? So. And my golf game is never going to improve. Okay. Those are the two things I've learned. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> okay. And, um, well, I guess I wish you good luck, and it has been fun having my conversation here with you. Thank you so much, Dean Rowley. Thank you, Alice. And I wish you the best of luck for the next 10 years here at the college. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> my conversation has been with Dean Rowley. He is the uh, Dean of Scheidler College of Business. Stay tuned for our show next week. Thanks for joining us.